The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, yesterday announced that it has restored the 43 items prohibited from access to the foreign exchange FX window in 2015. And this decision comes eight years after the items were banned from the official FX windows. The new development was disclosed in a statement signed by Issa Abdul Mumin, CBN's Director of Corporate Communication. In 2015, the CBN restricted the availability of foreign exchange to the importation of 43 items, which could be locally produced within the country. Let's now bring in economist Joshua Akimbanjo to discuss this further. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning and good morning to the audience. All right. So I think the first place to begin would be to ask exactly what this means. The fact that the Forex ban has been lifted for years 43 items. What does this mean for maybe manufacturers first? What does this mean for the economy? Does this, I mean, what, what does it tell? Thank you for the questions. I, I think the first thing to look at is the objective. What is the objective of CBN um, uh, in lifting this in the first instance? The, the, the challenge has been um, liquidity drive on, on the Forex market. Um, so it's believed that with this, it will be able to drive a huge sense of you know, uh, economic uh, activity that will then help generate um, uh, forex. forex. Uh, but the, the other concern I have again at some point was, look, I mean, how will it affect the manufacturing sector, you know, within Nigeria? Um, you then ask the question, do we even have enough capacity within the country? Do we have sufficient to actually meet the, uh, the huge population? So uh, we, it, it needs to still be looked at to see in the short term, not even in medium or long, um, how this will impact on the economic activities and help in generating, you know, the forex. Well, um, I mean, those are good, you know, angles to look at it from. Um, but just before we get into uh, the question as to whether the Nigerian government even has, you know, the, um, the forex to provide to these persons, you know, now that you've lifted a ban, uh, do you have the forex to give them? But before we get there, I, I want us to, you know, first of all, look at what we did to ourselves as a country in the last eight years. Mm. Um, the ban was placed, you know, with the intention of encouraging local manufacturing and local production of these items, which failed woefully, you know, from what it looks like. It doesn't seem like a lot changed. And so, you know, did we simply waste eight years of, um, um, you know, with this move that really could have been, you know, avoided? When you look at the, uh, the currency, I think it, it's always key to look at the currency. Um, what has been the notches by which you know parameters have moved um, within each sector first? What has been the impact on the on price of commodities, and what has been also the impact on the people in general? Um, I recall the case of I think it was the rice that was first uh, a major challenge when the borders were closed, and the question you started asking was, have we actually started generating sufficiently to cater for the needs of? Of our people uh, before that was done. You would expect that a government uh, that is, well, if I use the word, you know, for right thinking would have said, look, we've, we've put a lot of um, support on ground, we've done enough to help our local uh, manufacturers, uh, looking at the entire value chain that has, in, you know, the value chain has already been uh, put in place to enable such level of economic activity before you now ban the reason why you ban is to help the local industries to actually, you know, promote uh, and then also to be sustained and not overshadowed by more muzzled, you know, international, you know, corporations. But that has not, that did not happen before the government embarked on that ambitious, you know, policy of banning um, those, you know, the, the imports. At some point, you also know that within our circle, there were a lot of challenges also with people who, or let me say, you know, saboteurs, if I may use that word, who are also affecting uh, the local producers. We know that in this country there are, there are leakages. Uh, those, whatever was even produced locally, because I think it was in, uh, revealed at some point in some of the reports, how you would take those pro locally produced items, you know, shipping them through some other parts like, you know, the, the northern borders. Uh, those are things that you want to consider. I, I, there are a lot of, you know, bottlenecks that were not addressed. And if I use your word, eight years, was it an eight year of waste? It seems so. Because when you consider all the challenges that have been faced, it appeared so. 
Um, and we are hoping that the reason why the CBN governor, again, maybe you want to think about that, because the reason why this came up was following the recent conversations that the CBN governor you know, put on ground, saying that, look, we want to focus more on monetary policies. We don't have business and the fiscal you know, activities. Let's focus on monetary and then support the activities of the monetary uh, um, executor. I think that has been the challenge, and this is what I believe um, is being addressed. All right. So, so now let's talk about uh, what exactly this would mean for the for the currency. Of course, some of the affected items include rice, cement, margarine, palm kernel, palm oil products, vegetable yeah, oils, yeah. meat, processed meat products, vegetables and processed vegetable, poultry, tomatoes, tomato paste, soap, cosmetics, and head pants. So what this means is that the importers of these items can now freely purchase, you know, from the official window at a cheaper rate. And I want to ask what exactly this means for our currency. Part of the policies that had been implemented in the past few months was unification of the currency to ensure that we find some stability to the volatility that the currency has been experiencing. But on Wednesday, it fell to an all-time low, 1,045 Naira to the dollar. So what would this mean? Is this going to mount more, more pressure? I know that CBN is trying to put interventions to ensure, in fact, CBN had been advised to increase its rate um, so many suggestions have been flying, but we know that right now we're in dire situations. Do you think that this would um, maybe in some measure ease the pressure on the currency? What, what should we expect? You listed those items. For the three items are, interestingly, uh, basic necessities. Basic necessities. That is, as I read it last, yeah, last night, I think I was just going through and review it. The first thing I said was these are basic necessities and uh, what will that do is first of all take care of the needs of people. So if needs are met, that is my first concern. The second part of it for me is this. Will it enable economic activities? Will it move the engine of, uh, of the nation in terms of you know, uh, the interplays of demand and supply? When you have a traction where inflows are coming in, it becomes easier for you to generate more in terms of forex. And I believe that this is what the CBN governor was speaking about when he was talking about intervention policies and how they want to limit themselves more to the, to the monetary sector. Uh, but beyond that, it's also the fact that the development part of it is what they are pulling off from. Because apparently CBN have been doing more of uh, interventions in development you know, sectors. And if you take off the money that you are putting in that development sector, that means you actually have enough to focus more on monetary and also focus more on these critical need areas. And with that, like I said, we can't even predict immediately, but you can actually project to say, look, let's look at what happened in the next three months. So look at the short term base and then see um, where these foreign, I mean, these forex that have been previously injected in development you know, activities, taken back, affect or impact on um, this need area, which are critical for, for the economy. Well, um, well, so it is expected that this will benefit Nigeria's economy somehow, some way. It is expected, um, yes. Yeah, but final uh, question that I want to ask, um, I, I don't know if I got clarity on that. Um, will the Nigerian government be able to provide the forex that these, you know, the traders, importers, and every other person, you know, might require? And I'm asking that because I remember that, you know, the conversation concerning importation of petrol, you know, one of the things that petrol marketers were complaining about is that now they are free, you know, in, enough to import, but there's no forex to import, and the federal government is not releasing forex to them. So, do you think that the Nigerian government will be able to, you know, afford, you know, this? So I'm taking again from the word of the CBN governor, who is clearly saying that they have before now been focused on development sector of the economy. If you take that money away from that development sector, in other words. I don't have business as CBN to now be sponsoring or supporting or influencing matters that relate more to fiscal and also to development sector of the economy. I want to focus more on the monetary and the parts that also involve more around food. Because I, as, um, as she was reading through those lists, I mean, if you look at everything there, it's really around the basic needs. And if you have these basic needs met and you're able to compete healthy in that space, Again, you will see opportunities for huge traction. That means you're able to manage the economy. The resources you are taking away from the development sector, in other words, that's those forex that have been injected in that area, you are diverting it now to this side. 
that talks about availability of funds. And I, I want to believe that is what he was saying. And um, I think there's a follow-up uh, press briefing that should happen today where we expect that he will now reel out the details of these diversionary you know, uh, policies that they are putting in place. But I, I think it's a healthy thing if we are to look at it from the first point of view of meeting the needs of the people. And that is what I think is more critical at this point in time. Right. We yeah. certainly do hope that this meets the needs of people yeah. and that it's, it's better for the economy. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you so very much. Thank All you right. for having me.